So as we look for a solution to school shootings, violent video games have come under fire. And now a video game maker is facing backlash for what it's created. So according to Variety, Bellevue-based Valve plans to release Active Shooter that will be on June 6th. It calls itself a dynamic SWAT simulator, and screenshots actually show what appeared to be some sort of a school setting where players can shoot officers and civilians. Many anti-gun groups condemn this game. Now, joining us is Jason Pace. He's the executive director of UW Bothell's Digital Future Lab and someone who knows a lot about video games and violence within the games. Hi, uh, Jason. We appreciate you being here. I know you had a chance to work on the Halo franchise years ago, uh, but you had some concerns, and I know you walked away from that. Explain what some of your concerns were. I think that um, over time, as I worked with the franchise in the industry and just became more aware of sort of the landscape, it was really increasingly clear that there was a diversity crisis. We're well aware of that now in video games. And also that we weren't having the conversations I think we needed to have about the impact of the extreme focus on violence and combat simulations in so much of our entertainment. Now explain this, is there a link between video game violence and real life violence? This is a conversation that I think is frequently confused. There is a pretty strong case for a link, you can see this in the American Psychological Association's assessment, for, inc for increased aggression when you play violent video games. So people who play a lot of violent video games tend to become more aggressive. There is not a strong correlation for that aggression translating into physical violence. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It just means that we haven't made a strong case for that yet. So it is safe to say that people will become overall more aggressive frequently when they play violent video games, not necessarily more physically violent. So when we do talk about solutions to school shootings, should video games be part of that conversation? Because this did come up after the Santa Fe, Texas shooting. I think it has to be. We look at video games as one snapshot in our culture. We are saturated with increasingly violent media and have been, it's been, we always up the stakes, right? So what happens is you see a shocking movie and then the next movie has to one up that in order to get the same reaction. It's the same in video games. And so we have to have conversations, not in a vacuum, but looking at the overall landscape of our media. And if we're going to do justice to that, we can't exclude video games from that conversation. They do play a role in this violent culture that we're saturated in. And with that being said, do you think we need to change games overall or do we need to do a better job regulating who's playing them? That's the million dollar question, right? So do you, do you try and keep them out of the hands of players or do you regulate them on some other way? One of the issues is that in other forms of media, there is typically an adult in the room at somewhere in the chain. So you have people who want to make super violent films, and then they have to go up to get money from the studios, and there's all these kinds of approval gates. And at every approval gate, there are different priorities. So different kinds of minds are weighing in on the decision of, does this piece of media get to see the light of day? In the video game industry, it's much more homogenous. The people who own and run the distribution platforms are basically the same same folks who are making the video games and playing the video games. And so they all think alike. And so if you have a passionate creator who is really excited about their hyper-violent video game experience, chances are they're going to find some allies in that pipeline that will help them get their game out to the world in a way that maybe sometimes other forms of media might not be able to achieve. Right. And of course, you know, these games out there, we always say they're rated teen or they're rated only for adults but kids always seem to get their hands on them some way or somehow. It's really hard to regulate to, to regulate it in that way, right? Yep. Um, the, it, everybody has a PC in their bedroom. All kids are great. They're typically better than their parents at getting around parental controls. And there is no meaningful way, at a large scale at least, to keep these experiences out of the hands of kids. And so I think we need to be honest with ourselves and say it's not really going to be effective just ex expecting parents to be the sole gatekeeper for this content. And we have a few seconds, but i got to ask you this question. 
through the history of video games, I mean, they were family friendly. You could be there with your mom and dad playing Pac-Man, your Mario, your, mm -hmm. your, your Sonic the Hedgehog. And how, how have we progressed? Why have we progressed to the point where we have all of these violent video games? What happened? It's fascinating if you look at the history of video games. In the 80s and early 90s, video games were um, more of an intellectual exercise or an arcade exercise where you were jumping on platforms or maybe you were shooting things, but it was very cartoonish. There were some critical advances in technology um, in the early 90s that allowed what's called networked multiplayer deathmatch to happen. And there were some uh, companies who made experiences that were early versions of our contemporary shooting games that allowed people to play against each other, both locally and online, and basically were combat simulations. And that opened up a new market that exploded, and it has driven much of the advancements in technology and certainly has made the dollar amounts bigger and bigger every year. And so if you fast forward 25 years later, we have this multi-billion dollar global industry that is fundamentally predicated on a notion of hyper-realistic combat simulation and violence. That's kind of where we're at right now. Times have changed. Yeah, Jason all Chase, about the money. Thank too. you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, now